All right, today we are going to be talking about domain and range of functions. Domain and the set of ordered pairs x, y, the domain is the set of all x coordinates. This is a list of our input values or our x values. Range and a set of ordered pairs x, y, the range is the set of all y coordinates. So range is a list of all my outputs or my y values. So looking at this first example, I have four ordered pairs. So when I'm looking for my domain, I'm looking at my x values. So I have 2, negative 1, 2, and 0. Okay, so something important to remember is always list them from least to greatest. And if a number occurs more than once, you do not need to list it more than once. So notice the smallest number I had was negative 1 then 0 and 2. And even though I have 2 listed twice, I don't write it twice in my domain list. Okay? My range values, switch colors here, my range values were 3, 0, negative 5, and negative 3. So I'm going to list them least to greatest, and I didn't have any repeats, so that doesn't matter. So negative 5 was my smallest, then negative 3, then 0, and then 3. I might see my function as a function table, okay? So my domain values, right here are my x values. Notice they were already listed least to greatest, so all I had to do was write them out, okay? My range values, though, they're not in order. So if I go least to greatest, I had negative 3, 4, oh, I have it listed twice, okay, and 5. That's my range. Again, I list them least to greatest. And even though a number may be in my range more than once, I don't list it more than once. All right, if you remember, this is called a mapping diagram. For domain and range, this is super easy to look at because these numbers should be listed least to greatest already on the map. If you recall, the left side is my x's, the right side is my y's, and they normally will be labeled, okay? So my domain, negative 4. Negative 2, 0. My range, negative 6, 1, 4, and 5. So how do I do it with a graph? I could look at these points and individually find my domain and my range, but sometimes using another representation may be helpful. So if I were to, this is just called a set brace, and so I'm grouping my set of ordered pairs. I might go ahead and count out these ordered pairs. 1, 2, 3, 4 negative 7 comma 5 okay that's this one I'm gonna color them as I go so I don't forget them negative 4 where we went left is negative up 1 it would be positive 1 Got that guy um, over here I have 1 negative 3 Okay, up here I have 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I have 3, comma 5. And last but not least, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. So 5, negative 5. Okay, I'm going to double check because it's a graph. I'm going to make sure I didn't miss any. I closed that set there. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five points. I had five ordered pairs. So from here, I can easily do my domain and my range. Notice my domain, negative seven, negative four, one, three, and five. The reason they're already in order is because I went from left to right on my graph. Okay, range, I have negative five, then negative three, then one, and then 5. Again, I don't need to list 5 again, even though it's repeats. Okay. Quick review. Let's go back and look at these once more. This Is this a function? Okay. So when I say a function definition, if you recall, was for every input, there is exactly one output. Meaning, x can't repeat. So if I look here, and change my color. I have 2, 3, and 2, negative 5. This is not a function. 
my input values can't repeat. I can't have two going to two different output values. And when we look at the next one, if I look at my input values, they're all different, okay? So even though I have six with four and negative three with four, it's fine to have my outputs repeat. All my inputs are different, so this is a function. Let's look at our next one. This is the mapping diagram. This one's a little bit new. So how do I tell if this is a function? Well, just like the last problem we did with the graph, we can put it into another representation. So let's think about what this map means. When I have an arrow from four, negative four, that's my x, to one, one is my y value, that's the ordered pair this line right here represents, okay? Then I have this, negative two, comma, four, Okay, negative two goes also to five and zero to negative six. So you just follow the arrows. And so again, as you saw, negative two was with four, but it's also with five. My input values can't repeat. So when I have this input value that goes to two different outputs, that means this is not a function. Okay, last one. I could look at my ordered pairs and see that I have all different x values. I could also use my vertical line test. Notice if I draw a vertical line, I only ever hit one of the points at a time. So this is a function.